So the next interesting question is who controls all of this, the Internet and the World Wide Web? We saw that the Internet was created by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and originally it was called the ARPANET. And we saw the World Wide Web was created by this engineer, Tim Berners-Lee at CERN. So we have these two things created by really distinct organizations and individuals within those organizations. Does DARPA still control the internet? And does CERN control the World Wide Web? No. <laughs> the answer is nobody. <laughs> nobody controls the internet and the World Wide Web. There's not one company, there's not one individual that owns it and says, hey, it's going to be this way. I'm changing it. You don't like it, tough cookies. And that's one of the cool things about the internet and the World Wide Web. There's no one individual or organization which controls it. Instead, we have several standards organizations which make recommendations about how it should be implemented. And, uh, and there's a lot, of course, moneyed interests and big companies who want to influence one way or another or see it grow and develop in certain ways, right? So they have influence on those standards organizations and they have members sitting on the boards and, you know, as part of those member organizations. But here, the standard organizations, one of the main ones is the W3C. And the W3C stands for the World Wide Web Consortium. And it's an international com community that develops open standards to ensure the long-term growth of the web. Right? So that's what the W3C is. And, you know, companies like Google and Amazon and Yahoo, there's an entire member list. You could go look at it. It's huge. Right? But they all have people who are, you know, working with the W3C to make recommendations about how the web should develop. And then standards get implemented. And then browsers implement those standards. And then since people are using those browsers, those of us developing for the web, you know, use those standards so that they work in the browsers. That's kind of how the game works. There's another organization called the WhatWig, the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group. So the W3C and the WhatWig, the W3C is bigger, more influential. The WhatWig is kind of like, you know, another little group that does something really similar. <laughs> so it's just another group that's out there. There's the Internet Engineering Task Force, which is more technical, and they really get into the technical details of the internet. And, uh, and so that's the IETF, and that's another standards organization that helps develop the, or the, the growth of the internet and the World Wide Web. And then there's, of course, other standards organizations, and you can see the whole list right there on Wikipedia. But I just wanted to make sure you're familiar with the W3C and WhatWig and the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, because you see those out there a lot. And so you should, you know, be a little aware, oh, those are the three standards organizations which make recommendations about how this entire, you know, thing should be growing. There are also legal jurisdictions when, which come into who control the Internet and the World Wide Web. And that's a really interesting issue because here you have a map of the world and all of the different countries in the world. And each of those countries have different legal systems. They have different legal systems. So each country has its own legal jurisdiction. Well, in certain countries, one thing might be legal, and in another country, it might be, be illegal, yet the internet spans it all. So, for instance, in China, they don't really give a hoot about intellectual property, or in other Asian countries. You could buy Microsoft Office bootleg copies or movie bootleg copies or MP3s right on the street, no big deal, right? And in our country, we really care about that. So who's who's so why not just go into China or some other Asian country where they don't care about intellectual property and start a web company to sell all of this, you know, pirated material to people in America? Well, it's illegal in America, but our company is over in that other country. So you get interesting legal jurisdiction issues. And then the 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 country of a certain legal jurisdiction makes rules about what's accessible or acceptable on the internet or not not acceptable. And then they have laws about if you do certain things, okay, you're in trouble, you might pay a fine, you might go to jail. <laughs> so that also influences and controls the internet and the World Wide Web. And then telecom companies uh, also have an influence on, you know, the internet and the World Wide Web. A lot of telecom companies, uh, you know, uh, would like to see fast lanes and slow lanes in the internet and different speed access and companies who want to offer their material to consumers at a fast rate have to pay a higher rate. 
But there's this uh, uh, egalitarian, this great sort of ethos about keeping the web dem- democratic, right? Where it's like everybody has access to the same material for for the for free for the same speed. And so that's a uh, there's an organization out there. Keep the internet free. Keep the internet free. Open. It's uh, savetheinternet.com right here where they're always lobbying against the telecom companies to try to prevent them from, you know, making this fast lane, slow lane on the Internet where only big companies are able to send data to customers fast, quickly, because they're paying for the fast lane. So that's something else that's always going on with the Internet (laughs) and corporations. And then, of course, innovators also influence the Internet and the World Wide Web. So, uh, you know, this is a quote from Alan Kay, who's like one of the fathers of supercomputers. And he said, famously, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So people are always finding new and innovative ways to use the Internet and the World Wide Web. Like right now, uh, a new thing which is coming online is WebRTC. And that's a real-time communication on the web. And that's a really fascinating thing. How's that going to change the game? You know, um, people will innovate. And then there'll be like a whole new way of using the web, which will be a little bit different. (laughs) So uh, innovators also, you know, influence the Internet and the World Wide Web. So there's no one individual organization that controls the Internet and the World Wide Web. And there are many different individuals and organizations which all, to some degree, influence the internet and the world wide web so it's an interesting place but uh that that sort of freedom and lack of centralized control but control from many makes it a really special place and a pretty cool place so that's uh that's a little bit about who uh controls the internet and the world wide web no one many different organizations and individuals do